course I am. Yeah, of course. I look forward to meeting him. You know what I'm thinking? Hey, you get this place a kickstart. Three Whitaker roulette machines, eh? Right down the middle here. Two pence plays and 80 pence maximum payout. It's not going to make our fortune, is it? Isn't it? Family trade. Family trade. That's what this place is all about. What about the casino hotel? You said we'd be surfing the dream. You know what's going to happen to the resort casinos, eh? They're going to get hoovered up by the big boys. That's not me. I've always been one of God's chosen jippos. You know, king of the small guys, eh? Come on, let's get back to basics. What do you think, Barry? It's only a two-pence play. Jock of ages. Thought you'd finish with me. Yeah, so did I, but you keep dragging me back. You ready to tell me about the fire in your flats, yeah? It's a good job nobody were in there. Would have been a heartbreaking tragedy. Another death in your property, I agree. That would not have looked good. My wife's property. I think you'll find my wife owns the flats. Right. So why don't you go and talk to her? Maybe she burned them down. You don't seriously expect me to believe that. Do you know her? No, but... She's acting strangely lately. Like she knows something I don't, you know, like Carol Vorderman or something. Right. I'll tell you what, the sex. <sighs> She's going like a kangaroo on a space hopper. Makes all the mind games worth the trouble. If we prove that you burnt your flats down, then that looks like your attempt to destroy evidence. You know what I think? Tell me. I think you can't touch me. And do you want to know why? Sir? Oh, we blind. I was just leaving. Right. What were you doing? We're just grilling our chief suspect. Well, I thought we agreed you were going to take a back seat on this case. If I was the sensitive type, I might think you didn't want my help at all, Bly. It's just that I've been building up a relationship with some of the witnesses. I won't camp your style. I just want to make sure you get the right man. The son, eh? How old? About two years older than me. You're trying not to laugh, aren't you? No, no, of course not. OK, yes, I am. Well, come on, you've got to admit it's a bit ticklish. I'm sorry, but I can see Steve's side of this. He's scared shitless that you're going to realise how old he is. You don't think it means that he doesn't trust my feelings about him? It means he's terrified of losing you. And who can blame him? So he's gone up in your estimation because he's kept something from me? He went up in my estimation when I saw that he'd look after you. I know you think I'm getting married to get at you, but it's not like that. It isn't. You know when you were a kid and we used to go on the front and I used to hold your hand when you walked on the seawall and you used to beg me to let go of your hand? Beg me to let you do it. And I wouldn't. And you know why? Because I knew better. And maybe this is the same. Maybe I know better. Except you did used to let go of me and. Did I? Just for a few seconds, so I could see what it was like. You used to say, life without a bit of risk isn't worth living. You made me like this. Bloody hell, then, I've only got myself to blame. Afraid so. Go on, leave me alone. God might have created the world in six days, but I bet he couldn't organise your wedding. What do you think? For the wedding? Well, I'd marry you. 
would you? I don't know what I thought would happen, but it didn't go like this. Mm, me neither. I had this daft dream that me and Cheyenne would pick out the dress together, you know, do all the planning. Real mother-daughter stuff. Can't live on dreams, though, can you? Got to settle for the hand you dealt. Yeah. I mean, you and me. Didn't live our lives wondering how it would have turned out if you hadn't have fallen pregnant with Cheyenne so early on, did we? No. We just got on with it, didn't we? Because <laughs> if you keep looking back, you'll trip over what's in front of you. That's right. You look upset. Is there something wrong? This wedding seems to have done something for those two. Yeah. This rate, I'm gonna have to sleep with my walkman on. <laughs> I'd forgotten you could be funny. There's something you should know about Steve. Oh, and it was all going so well. It wasn't Dad that beat him up. It was me. <laughs> you don't expect me to believe that, do you? What did you do, stand in a box? No, I ate him with a brick. Don't say that, Danny. I saw you kiss him goodnight and get on that tram. And I thought, oh, if Dad found out, he'd be so, you know, angry and sad and hurt. And there were this pile of bricks from where they're doing up that bridge near the pier. You're really serious, aren't you? And I just wanted to tell you, because I wanted you to know that it wasn't Dad. So if you're marrying Steve to get back at Dad, do. He didn't do anything. Now you're freaking me out. You'd hit a man with a brick, which is bad enough. But to do it because of how he makes your dad feel? Have you any idea how pathetic that is? <laughs> 